One of the best things about my job is the people I meet. Um, I just came from a photo tour with, uh, with a guy from Costa Rica, a photo guide from Costa Rica named Luis. He, he brings his group from Costa Rica. He's an, he's an interesting guy. He, was, um, he started doing landscape photography professionally about three years ago, I believe. And uh, he quit his job and he just started to do whatever he, he thought he needed to do to, to, to be able to make a career out of landscape photography. Uh, and from there till now, he has a successful agency, photo tour agency, which operates in, uh, in many countries around the world very successful and uh, I thought it might be interesting to talk to Luis about this and uh, get, him, get him to tell us what he did to make this happen. So I'm here with uh, Luis. Yes. Hi. How are you guys? Photographer. Yes. Landscape photographer. Yes. Why? How did um, that be? Uh, how did you start? Yeah. Well, that's an interesting question because um, most people don't think about landscape photography as a job or yes. more like a hobby, right? Um, but I was traveling by myself uh, through Canada, and a couple of years ago, and that's when I realized looking at this beautiful lake with the stars and photographing that scenery, that's when I realized I, I definitely want to become a photographer. Like, that is my calling in life and that I wanted to do everything possible uh, to do so, okay. to become one, right? But at the time, I didn't know what landscape photography entailed or what does it mean to be, to be a landscape photographer, right? Um, I started studying more and learning more about landscape photography, traveling more. And I decided to open a photography blog in Costa Rica, where I'm from. And um, the idea behind the blog was to make myself take more pictures and have more content and improve and get better, mm -hmm. right? Because um, the more I, I needed content, the more I went out and take pictures. And the blog took off, like people started liking it a lot. and. There weren't any photography or landscape photography blogs back home yeah. at the time. So uh, it was a, a really good moment to do so. At some point, the, the followers were starting asking for a lot of photography tips and like how to take pictures, how to do this and that or where to go. And I decided, well, I'm going to do a workshop. Yeah. I'm going to teach people how to take pictures. Mm -hmm. And the first workshop was a really hard sell. Like, of course, like first workshops are always a hard sell. Uh, I remember getting like five people there, and but it was the start of it. Yeah. It was the beginning, and it was my my jump into the professional world um, and started becoming a teacher and becoming a landscape photography as well. So I did this workshop and I did a couple more. Mm -hmm. So there were like four or five workshops. During that period of time, I came to Iceland for mm -hmm. the first time. I was driven by the fact that it was so remote from what I knew, yeah. so far away from everything that I knew in terms of nature and everything, that I, f I find it was fascinating, right? Um, so I went there and I came back home and I wanted to offer the people that same experience, that feeling of wonder and completely overwhelmed by the beauty of nature. So I decided I'm gonna sell a tour to right. Iceland and people were like well nobody's gonna buy that like no, nobody's gonna pay a lot of money for that in Costa Rica and I opened one I set everything up I published the workshop and it filled really fast and then I opened a second one right away and it also got filled like super fast so I was very excited and I, I've always thought that um, whenever people tell you like that would never happen, you cannot do that, nobody will buy that, nobody will purchase what you offer, right? Just go for it and give it a try. 
exactly. Because otherwise you'll never know. You know, it's like it's like we talked about earlier. It's uh, there are kind of essentially two types of people. Yeah. The ones that do stuff. Yeah. And those that want to do stuff, yeah. but they don't, so yeah. they just bits about it. Exactly. And yeah. uh, and uh, pick on others that and and you know you, you talked about like I'm gonna do this and people will try to discourage you from doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Toxic people, man. Yeah, you know, they, they don't, are. I, I, they, they, maybe they don't mean to be. Yeah, it's yeah. just the way they are, or they 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 think, uh, they think that life is about being safe. Yeah. At that time, I I was working as a art director in a company, and I had a job for like six years already, and it was very stable, good job, and so people thought that I would be stupid to leave that behind. Mm. Uh, for something that was so crazy mm. as becoming a landscape photographer or a teacher of photography, right? Mm. And I just feel like, even like when people ask me, because I do lectures in universities, mm. and people ask me like, um, what should I study or what should I do, right? And I'm like, do what you feel mostly, most passionate about. Mm. Because if you are passionate about something, you're going to be good at it. You're going to pursue your different way and your your dream right mm -hmm. if you do something because of money or you do something because it's what would be stable and safe you probably won't be happy you Could will be, be stable and safe perhaps not yeah because what's stable and safe yeah nowadays yeah and uh, you know uh, but what is guaranteed if you if you enjoy doing this yeah you become yeah. good at it and yeah. if you become good at it you can monetize it. Exactly. And you have to also, there are doors that open for you, yeah. you know, and you need to know like when to take it, when to go, yeah. you know, because opportunities are, they're not giving to no, you. No. You have to make your own opportunities and you need to know which direction to go, right? Yeah. Uh, and you need to be also very flexible towards your goal. Yeah. Like um, sometimes I, I feel like I was very lucky because I, was there doing this at a time where landscape photography was basically starting in Costa Rica. So I was there first and I, that was very lucky for me. Mm -hmm. But also it was a lot of hard work. Yeah. So it was just making the most of that opportunity okay. that, that was very successful. And uh, so Iceland was the first international tour that I did. Um, you were actually there. I was the there, first yeah. one, yeah. First two. Yeah, first two, a fantastic Aurora. Yeah. Um, and uh, I kept going from that and now I, uh, the company offers tours in a lot of different locations in Africa, in Nam Namibia, Botswana, Madagascar, um, Canada, the US, Guatemala, Brazil and I get a lot of customers from Latin America because they like that um, the Latin spark and the yeah. Spanish yeah. and the, the heat of it all, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and it's good because you feel like you're traveling with family and friends, like yeah. everybody becomes your like old-time friend, your cousin, your uncle, your, you know, you feel at home. And that's one of the things that I feel it's very important for people that are doing photo expeditions, photo workshops. Don't look at it as a workshop or just like a, like a educational program. Yeah. Look at it as a life experience for people because it's what it is. Yeah. Like you're not there just to learn about f-stops. You're there to experience nature and to experience everything that it entails, you know? And also, like, you know, I, I hear it a lot with Iceland and all the Costa Rica also. I mean, are you going to do the uh, bird tag in Costa Rica? Yeah. It's, it's been done. Exactly. But, you know, why? Exactly. Are you going to see this cliff? Everybody shot this, you know, this glacier. You know, why don't you do something new? Yeah, yeah. How, how do you respond to that? Okay, so... I get that a lot from Iceland because I keep doing Iceland tours all yeah. the time and people are like that's the most photographed country in the world right now and I'm like yeah but have you been there like the experience of living it it's way different than just looking at a picture like it's okay I understand that uh, there's a lot of photos everywhere in the world has been photographed yeah. um, but have you lived it so that's the thing, it's not only about, it's been done, whatever, like every photographer can do something new if they wanted to, but also it's good to experience it. It's an know? experience. It's an experience. To stand in the wind, to stand in the cold, exactly. to feel the air, to see, to, to be here, the glaciers. the glaciers. Yeah. It's an experience, you yeah. cannot see that on pictures, and you really, pictures are secondary to that. Yeah, absolutely, and I always tell people like, when we're 
at a really cool location, yeah. I'm like, okay, stop for a minute. Just, just enjoy it for a second. Because as photographers, we're always there like with the camera trying to figure out settings and trying to take the best possible angle. But at some point we forget that we are there. Yeah. And it's very important to never forget that because otherwise you'll go back home with great pictures. That's okay. But you have you would have seen everything through the camera and not through your no eyes. No experience. No experience. No tourist yeah. shots. Yeah. No, no shots of your group. No shots of your new exactly, friends. Exactly. Exactly. And new friends. New That's friends. the other thing. Yeah. Um, new friends because the people that go with you become friends. And uh, there's a, a group dynamic that it's wonderful and it changes. Yeah. with every group. Just like-minded people doing yeah. what they love together. Exactly, exactly. So people are joined by their passion for nature and their passion for travel and of course photography. Yeah. So we have all those things in common, mm. even, we co even if we come from all different backgrounds. Mm. So that's a great thing. And also for me, I love meeting people from all around the world, mm. like you, uh, which we share a lot of things in common. And I believe that's one of the things that make you grow culturally and as a person, because you're open uh, to different types of m mentalities and mm. way of thinking, yeah. you know? And uh, that's why people should travel more. The world would be a better place if people would travel more. The more you travel, the more your mind opens to new experiences, to new cultures, new religions, new ways of thinking. And that makes you a richer person in every way. Yeah. There's this um, phrase that I, I really use as a, as a base for what I do. And it's um, to travel is to possess the world. Um, you cannot possess the world, yeah. but traveling is just like owning the world for yourself yeah. and becoming part of that world, yeah. not your own bubble. Yeah. And that's the problem with people nowadays. And for me, photography has been so important because I come from a background where I was always sitting on my computer, working, 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 and I would never experience anything new. I would always say, no, like, I don't want to go hiking. I don't want the heat. I don't want to sweat. Be one of those safe guys. Safe guys. Yeah. yeah. And all of a sudden I was like, I'm tired of being me. I'm tired of saying no to things. Mm. And I decided to just go for it. Um, I've always been like scared of the ocean. So I decided to become a scuba diver. And nice. things that I enjoy that I would have never done before. And I think Photography was the excuse to do that. Yeah. And now it gives I, you the tool, it gives you the opportunity. Yeah, to and, and it gives you like a purpose as yeah, well, yeah. you know, the drive. Yeah. I feel like photography is our drive and adventure is like our way of getting that, you yeah. know. And with the ultimate goal to inspire people. Yeah. How do we try to inspire people? By, first of all, conservation. The world is wonderful. We're losing it. We're destroying it. Just look at the pictures. It's just so wonderful what we have. And second of all, get out of your comfort zone, get out of where you are. If you're depressed, if you're sad, if you're lonely, go for something new, mm. take a break, go for something new. And I feel like a photo has done that for me and for a lot of people that, mm. that travel with me. There's a lot of, of people that tell me photography has given me life. No. I, I, I was always sad. I was, I come from a bad divorce. I come, you know, lots yeah. of things. Yeah. And photography has given them a reason. Purpose. A purpose, yeah. So I think there's a lot of things that um, are good in the landscape photography world. And I feel like when people get into that and they start growing and get more professional, they become very picky and they start feeling like if it's not a different angle, a different location, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. But as we said, it's always worth it if you look at it as an experience. Yeah. What was the defining factor? When did you say, okay, I'm, I'm, I, I got this. I'm going to quit my job. Okay. I got this. It was um, a point where I was doing the workshops, the blog, and my full-time job. Yeah. And I did this for like a year. Mm -hmm. And so every weekend I was working, trying to do workshops in Costa Rica. And every single night I was working at home, trying to like set the workshops, plan everything out, do the design, the marketing, everything. Um, and it was just so overwhelming and exhausting. I was, I was tired the whole time, but I was excited about this new project. And I decided to quit when I was working there and my mind was never there. So it was not fair for my job or my employ, 
my employees and everybody that worked with me there to just be there and not have my mind fully mm -hmm. on it you know and I decided I'm gonna quit uh, in two months yeah. that's what I said and I did I quit in two months um, it was nerve-wracking but it was so exciting in every possible yeah. way it was this type of anxiety but the, the good anxiety yeah. you know that you know something good is coming and you always get scared I mean everybody has things to pay and everybody has um, commitments yeah. you know but it makes you want to work harder yeah. because also you have that the fear you know makes you want to work harder you have to be on your toes you, you have you, you to be on your toes the thing is people say that I'm gonna open my own business I'm gonna do my my own company and they always say that because they feel like if they do so they're gonna have spare time they're gonna have yeah. vacations wow. they're gonna have and you know as well as I do that we don't have that there's like no vacation no spare time because if we don't work we don't make any money yeah. and that's also the beauty of it because it keeps you fresh it keeps you trying to like figure things out yeah. what to do next you know it, it it comes to that when people say to me and probably you, you're so lucky yeah you're, you're, you're so, so lucky, lucky. Yeah. it's not luck people yeah you know if you want a change yeah you have to be the change you have to do it yeah. Uh, it, it doesn't, you know, make sense just to quit your job and have no security, have yeah. no income. Yeah. So w w when's the time you have it? It's at night. So people will say, well, after a day of work, I'm just too tired. Yeah. You're not too tired. You're just not motivated. Not motivated. Not motivated. And you just don't want it. You don't uh, want it enough. Want it enough. Yeah. So, uh, so, so that's why sometimes, you know, people get frustrated and uh, they get regrets and they start to be bitter yeah. and those people you know some people like to call them haters yeah. I, you know I don't necessarily want to call them that they're just you know miserable people and they feed off other people's success yeah yeah that's true um, I mean I think some people just get into it for the, all the wrong reasons if you're gonna pursue like a new business or be an entrepreneur you have to do it from your heart from something that you feel passionate about otherwise you won't have that drive to work at night to work every weekend um, so if you're only thinking about money you won't don't make it be far a, don't be a landscape photographer don't be a don't be a <laughs> photographer <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a no money you know for a very selective few maybe yeah, yeah. but uh, for the uh, regular landscape yeah. photographer it's, it's just, just hustle it's grind <laughs> every single day and it's not glamorous you know no. um, I get that I, you're so lucky you're in yeah. these beautiful places and people feel like it's like you're just traveling your private jet and you're yeah. just like margaritas, margaritas <laughs> and yeah and <laughs> It's not glamorous. It's hard work. You're dirty all the time. You're sweating. You're cold. Yeah. Um, you're you're waking up at four in the four, rain. Four, yeah, and mm. not sleeping at all. You know, so but it's fun, and it's that's what we do it. Yeah. That's what we do it. Yeah. yeah. So if you're an uh, inspiring photographer and you want to do something with that, what do we do? Just try to focus on. Try to analyze what's missing, okay? Don't do what everybody else is doing. Because if you do that, then you're gonna be following people's steps all the time. It's very hard. I don't say, I, it's not easy at all. But try to find ways for your angle, you know? To open up your own, um, your own path. Yeah. And it's the hardest thing to do because it's not like you're like a brilliant mind that you're like, oh, this is it. Mm. Um, but try to find your own path yeah. and see where it takes you. Mm. And yeah. also, also I might add, I don't, you know, nobody's looking for a photographer. That's, <laughs> you know, there's nobody's hiring, really. What? You have to do your own stuff. You have to do your own stuff. And nobody's looking for a landscape photographer <laughs> to hire. Yeah. No. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you have to do your own stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Oli. It's been a pleasure. As always. Very inspirational guy. One of the nicest guy I ever met. Um, really interesting how he managed to make something out of nothing. 
Thank you for watching. Until next time. Bye.